I want to get better at my jiu-jitsu game. What do I do? Hmm. I'm in Edmonton, Alberta. I'm a kamikaze punishment, and I'm with my unbelievable, awesome favorite training partner, Sensei Jared Busmakers. We, while well, he's got a move for you guys, stay tuned. So the game plan here is we're getting smashed down in half guard. We need a little bit of a frame here. My half guard's nice and deep. If he was trying to pass it, I would have it locked up. And once he calms down, I unlock, strip my hips, circle in my butterfly hook. So now this is a butterfly half guard. Got my butterfly with the left, half guard with my right. Now he's on top of me, so I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna have my hands in his armpits, and it all depends where his pressure's coming. If he's going this way, I let him go that way. If he's pushing this way, I let him go that way. So, hands up, extend, extend, see which way he's going. Follow him, get on top. All right, again, we're in half guard here. Right now, it's just the regular half guard. I decide I gotta make something happen. Open up, shrimp out to make some space, and circle in my butterfly hook. This is what we want, butterfly half. As he's pressing down on me, I'm following his energy. I could launch him this way, I could launch him that way. We'll go this way this time, my legs come up, hands in the armpits, I push, extend, and get on top. So rolling with Sensei Bus Makers here, I was always having a hard time keeping pressure, so we've been drilling this, he's been showing this, and uh, the game changer for me was keeping this half guard pressure behind the knee with my bottom leg. Keep that. Then when you hip out, you put that butterfly in, but you keep that pressure. You keep that pressure behind the leg as the butterfly guards remain. Then when the pressure comes, you take the web of the hand and the armpits, you pressure him up. And then you follow him over. That's a little half guard sweep that he was pulling off me on a regular basis. So I try to make sure to put it part of my game now. It was really effective. I was having a hard time putting pressure on him. And then every time he did that sweep, I felt I was very light. So we figure we pass it along to you guys, see if it fits your game. Anything you want to add to this sweep? I'm no master of this sweep. I do it a lot. I'm no master of it. I'm just playing around. It's in my game. It works here and there but we're getting better at it. Right on. So uh, we just finished training. You mind if I add some video footage of this on here? Let's do it. All right, so hopefully we'll catch you guys soon on the mat. Stay tuned. So here we are at the beginning of our five rounds, five minutes each with one minute break. Getting in some good training. You're gonna see a combination of some flowing grappling, some competitive grappling, and somewhere in all this, some cooperative grappling. The main focus is that we're a 
experimenting, we're trying new stuff in a controlled, trusted fashion. It's always a blast rolling with Sensei bus makers. Here he goes for his patented half guard sweep that he covered in this video. He's pulled this off a few times on me. He will again yet today. So you'll see some different variations of it. Jared is uh, going to attempt a Kumura bent arm lock attack here. I sense that. I anchor my hand nice and low between his leg and my leg. Then when he gets a bit more serious, I base my weight on my arm. Then he aborts. He scrambles up. And look at this nice back trip to side control. The beauty of flow grappling one move right into another and at the end of the five minutes boy i tell you it, it, it feels like we're going all out because it's constant movement it's taxing it's a great energy flow we come back to our feet he gets my back like he always does and i'm trying to fish for a bent arm lock but obviously I don't got no time he puts me in my butt Got my back again, flipping back over. I grab his deep hand to prevent him from getting my back from the bottom. And then when I find the right time, I turn into him, back on top, and then his infamous neon escape. Back on trying to find a half guard pass, which is difficult to do makes me feel light and we're one movement into another. Jared's attacking a guillotine choke attempt. You'll see that my chin is down, shoulders are up. He's gonna transition to a hip bump sweep. I counter with a leg lock attack. He defends the leg lock. I transition to old school X guard, trying to get something going. He's a bit savvy to that, ends up passing the X guard and ends up into mount. In our next scramble here, it seems he's gonna attack the guillotine once again. I tuck my chin down, shoulders up, I reverse the position, defend the neck, turn in top position. And we're back to our usual half guard scramble. I'm trying to pass, he's trying to sweep. Makes me feel light as always. And we got some different positional scrambles. So Jared's attacking a bent arm lock. I pin my elbow close to my hip and rib cage, not give him the space. He transitions to his butterfly half guard, elevates me into an ankle lock attempt. I'm defending that by stripping down his legs, trying to get top position. I'm gonna try to regain his ankle lock attack, and he does. I strip down his legs once again, pass his legs, get side control momentarily. Once I think I'm comfortable, he regains the half guard. Struggling a little bit for position. He sits up. Don't know if we should go for that guillotine or bent arm lock or a sweep. That's five minutes of non-stop movement. Taxing, you know, we loved it. Okay, so we're starting off round number two, looking for grips, digging for underhooks, feeling each other out, picking up the intensity just a little bit. I get in on a single. I think I'm doing good. 
I finish it with an outside trip and of course he had to reverse it so yeah he just used my momentum get top position now he's got a leg lock attack and once again we're in the non-stop mode which is just very taxing and but very benef beneficial at the same time so i managed to get top position and get out of the leg attack finally passes half guard to side control he goes to his knees now i end up turtle top position i'm trying to maintain some good pressure some weight his defense is solid i'm like i can't really get nothing from here so i might as well put him on his back and try something else and again that non-stop movement difficult to pass his guard So here I'm going to try to stop him from going to my back by overhooking his arm and then he does a nice half guard sweep to side control. As he accomplishes the side control I time his tricep, I use the tricep control escape over to my knees and then I drive forward to get top control. So the tricep push to my knees drive forward and reverse the position so coming up is my patented triangle choke triangle choke guard pass where I bait the triangle choke he attempts it and I use that pressure and I cover that in one of my videos where I use that as a guard pass by keeping my head up, arm back, and pass to side control. So here I'm looking to keep Jared flat on his back. I'm gonna go to control position number three and set up the north-south choke, which I have a very difficult time finishing on Jared. He uh, manages to defend with his one hand. He sees it coming. He's got a great bridge as an escape to this one, but I try to reposition my body to, away from the cage so I got better base. I'm attempting it. You know, I know that bridge is coming and somehow I cannot stop it. Amazing bridge. So I think I got it. I'm trying to apply more pressure and then he gets out of it once again. We're picking up the pressure and the pace a little bit. So now the attacks are getting a bit more serious. He's finished me with that arm lock attempt before. I shove my hand inside my thigh to protect it. And he releases. Transitioning on to another position and probably another submission is coming as well. Jared's got great back entries and back control. I earned my keep in that position with him. I get to practice a lot of my defense from the back. He's got, I don't know, 24 different entries, I would assume. That's what it feels like anyways. I know how to defend my neck, try to put my back on the mat and try to get out of position and again that guillotine attack he does i bring my chin down shoulders up i just take a little bit of leverage away and when i see the opening i pass the guard now the heat and pressure is turning up as you can see i'm trying to pin him down he's not having it and when he says okay no more there we go i'm on my back oh no i'm not so it's a scramble. We're not accepting position till now. I pass the guard, or attempt to, back to half guard. And the end of the round here is gonna happen pretty quick and not a moment too soon. So Jared's gonna attempt a double. I counter with a guillotine. He somehow takes me down back to a single. That was too easy. 
but uh, I decided not to let go the guillotine so I know it could be viewed as a rookie move holding on to a guillotine like this and I know I'm, I'm open for the Von Flew choke if I see that one coming I will abort the guillotine but um, I found over the years rolling I got good pressure with the guillotine on the bottom it's not I've never submitted no one with this but it's a stalling tactic I've sometimes I've swept person I've swept people back on their back sometimes I'll use it to go to my knees but for this instance you'll see me use the guillotine and the control I have to prevent him from moving forward I'll end up replacing him to guard which is I guess not a bad I'm back to half guard I will release get some distance and go to guard so it worked out for me that time Jared's looking to pass my guard. I'm trying to bring him back towards me. I end up catching his hips a little bit too high center of gravity and I was able to get a sweep off him over to his back. So I just saw that, I felt that I should say, and was just able to grab and get top position. So from control position number three, I'll attempt that north-south choke. This time it came a little bit quicker. I was able to get it a little bit deeper. I'm gonna hold on to this longer than I should have, but it just felt that I had it sunk in. I was really based out, countering his bridging. I was hearing the labored breathing. I thought it was sunken in, but no, after 30 seconds of this, he ended up escaping once again. And it's either he saw it coming and able to take some leverage point away from me or I need a little bit more work. Maybe a little bit of both. You see me rotating to my right. I'm trying to apply more weight and pressure towards his neck. I'm rotating, I'm applying more pressure not quite getting it I got both hands involved feels like I got it but again not everything works against sensei bus makers After that submission attempt and the pressure I put, I know the heat's going to be coming back my way, which is part of the game and wouldn't have it any other way. But once again, that half guard, look at that half guard sweep. He's going to use a variation of it. I know it's coming, so I'm giving him more grief in that now. Before he used to sweep me a little bit easier from this position, but uh, it's still part of his game and hard to stop. Jared's going to be fishing for a Kimura right here. He quite won't feel it. And he always then transitions to another submission. And he goes for his guillotine. I sense that. I got a bit more warning this time. Bring my shoulders up, chin down. Fight this one off. And uh, I'm definitely looking forward to that buzzer. He aborts the guillotine and again that half guard sweep and time is up, not a moment too soon. Okay, I'm pretty proud of this one takedown. Doesn't happen too often with Jared, but I go with a step and go 
the Gi edition where I step to the side, block his leg, and rotate, and I get top position. So that won't last. I know the heat is coming. I got top position here, trying to keep him flat. I go to Neon. He goes for escape once again. We're getting in some good reps. Ankle lock attacks. Trying to defend. My toe gets hooked in his shirt. He hears me wince a little bit. Let's go. And here he is, one of his back take entries. Here I go. Defend the neck. Put the back on the mat. And hope for the best. Even though the heat is getting a bit hotter, we're putting more pressure, we're still experimenting. We're not displaying our A game, we're trying to get better at our B game and trying to get into different areas of rolling. Here's his Kimura attempt, but I drive my elbow into my rib cage, shutting it down altogether because I know if he were to lock up, it'd be more of a serious attack. But this sweep all started with his half guard sweep once again. And now I find myself mounted. I usually have uh, some pretty solid mount escapes, but for some reason, not today. Must be the guy that I'm rolling with and must be the deciding pressure and the heat rising in the kitchen. So I'm on the receiving end, a lot of pressure and good mount control. So I decided to tuck my chin in, keep my elbows in towards my ribs, staying locked in. He'll end up finding an opening to attack the Americana. And that's when I push on his tricep and use that as an escape. So he's attempting the Americana. I push on his tricep, hip out. And I get out of mount. <laughs> and now out of the frying pan and into the fire. Once again, back take. And uh, putting in the reps on, on rear. Rear choke defense. So I got, he's going for collar attack. I bring my grip in. I'm trying to put my back on the mat to defend. And... Uh, feel safe, put my back on the mat, he's still not letting go, we're getting a bit more serious in our attacks, which we should be, but uh, I'm still gripping onto my collar, relieving the pressure at my neck, now it's his turn to, he's trying for the bow and arrow, I block that leg, I'll end up turning in his guard, but that strategy will only work momentarily. I turn to his guard. He throws a leg over my arm, squeezes, and here I go. We're in round four right now. It feels we're in round six or seven, but geese are wet, having a blast. I do better at defending the triangle choke when I know it's coming, when I bait it. But uh, yeah, here we are, regripping again. My infamous takedown won't work this time. He'll see it come a mile away, a sidestep. He steps with it. So I'm just putting pressure on Jared up against the cage for now, holding him still, driving his arm across, trying to set up my takedown or lack of, but here we go. He ends up in my guard, sorta, kinda, then leg attack. I grab his arm, I cross my legs for the defense, and I get saved by the bell. Another great round. Round 
Round number five starts with some foot sweep attempts. Trying to grab a single. I'm gonna go for a hip throw of sort. Missed, I get the back. He goes for the switch. And uh, a little bit of a pause. I try to drive forward, doesn't work. I go to my back and pull guard. This is round five here, so I'm just trying to make the last five minutes go by. I'm in guard. He's trying to pass my guard. He sits back. I'm trying to get a high guard, cause him some grief. We know each other's game pretty good. He leans back. That's where it benefits him the most. I try to pass that leg, go to my knees. He doesn't have nothing to do with that. And gets back to video 61. Trying, I believe it's the truck position. He's either going to try the banana splits, eventually, oh, a calf slicer, banana splits, or the twister. He's going to try the twister here. So since this is fresh in my head, just from video 161, I sort of knew where the openings were and what he wanted. So my defense wasn't too, too bad in this situation, but he's got my back once again. some good agility move coming up here he'll go from the back to just onto my back boom right over top beautiful move put my back on the mat to avoid the back take I get mounted I pull half guard uh, Jared's been successful with this forearm attack on me in the past so I know to glue my elbow to the mat so he doesn't entangle <laughs> he'll get it here he'll catch me sleeping and here we go now he's got the entanglement but he'll need to put more weight on my arm to control it and that's when I can slip through the back and get out of it altogether briefly I think I'm out but I'm not back in guard. It's better than being side controlled. Jared's looking to pass my guard, eventually unlock my ankles. He's gonna push a leg down and sit back for some ankle lock attacks. My defense is solid in this situation. I know to hold on to him, try to get back on top. He needs to create space, get me off balance so he can continue his attack. I'm trying to strip down his ankles, but he's got good control. He's picking up the heat and here I go down. I'm feeling it. Doesn't have quite the leverage. I got good ankle lock defense. Doesn't hurt to try. I do get tapped out once in a while with that. He aborts it, he knows he doesn't got it. He's in my half guard. I'm gonna try to go to my knees. I see the guillotine, I bring my chin down, shoulders up. Now he's gonna abort that. I got gonna go into a half guard straight leg lock. I just about have it, his hand is up. Not quite, but it was a free submission attempt as I passed the half guard. I'm gonna abort that, get to side control, and now just laying and praying. Hopefully the round is just about over. I go to control position number three. He elevates me, brings in his legs into play, and bridges me over. I'm attacking his ankle, a twisting ankle lock, but my head should be closer to his ankle for it to be effective. He's holding on to my body. I'm trying to slide my body away from him so I get better pressure in his ankle. Don't have quite have it. We get back in a different position and yes, the buzzer has sounded. I think we're both happy people. 
If you happen to be in the Edmonton area, I cannot stress enough, Sensei Jared Busmaker's Jiu Jitsu program is the place you want to be at. I don't miss it when I'm in the area. You shouldn't either. I had a blast making this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. And as always, I look forward to seeing you on the mat soon.